Hello everyone, I hope you're well on this warm sunny day, well it is warm at the moment. Uh, my name is Nick and we're looking at a rather basic game on the Commodore Amiga, it's Snake Pit, published by Incognito Software in 1988 and developed by MKSoft. So here we go, what is this game? Well it's like a traditional snake game really, round mazes. You control a green snake, you must collect all the food pellets on the screen, each time you do your tail gets longer, and if you crash into your own tail you are dead. You can hit the walls in this version, and then once you've collected them all, so here we go, there's an exit that appears, and then you can escape off the screen. And that's it really. There's 50 levels included, there's also an editor, and you don't have to play all the levels in the same order. So we'll see how this one plays, but I think you've seen all the gameplay literally in the last 30 seconds. Stage one. Nice drums playing here. Now I think I had a disc back in the day. Will this come on a disc with something else? It might have been IK Plus or it might have been Interface, a game we haven't actually played yet, or it might have been on Stunt Car Racer. I can't I can't remember, but it was on a disc that was going around at the time, a compilation disc. Uh, the game also has an editor with it, so if you get bored of these stages or you're with a mate, you can actually uh, design your own ones. It starts off quite basic this, but there are extra bits that come in as well. The snake can move bits of walls in certain levels and collect pills which makes his tail go smaller, uh, which makes things a bit helpful. Now, in the levels where you've got the open spaces, the game isn't too bad, it's nice and easy. It tends to get tricky when you've got a maze and you might go back on yourself and thought, oh dear, I've done a bit of a boo-boo. So I did spend quite a lot of time on this. You might have had an old Nokia phone which has a snake type game on that. On all of those ones though, if you crash into the wall or the scenery, you're dead. Uh, this one you can uh, crash into the scenery and you're okay. And it gives you a couple of seconds to actually make a decision what direction you're going to go in. Uh, if you don't make a decision, eventually it will make it for you. But only crashing into your green body will actually kill you. Now you start off with those lives there, five. And each time you do a level, you get an extra one. So it's quite generous there. And until you get onto the later stages as the exits open, um, you will be... Um, you know, Situation under control. You will be playing this for quite some time. It's a time waster, a bit like Tetris is, I suppose. So we'll do a few levels. Now this stage is uh, too tricky, I think, for stage two. It should be a bit later on in the game. So here we go. So it's more of a maze network, this one. Very basic game, loads pretty quickly. Uh, I'm doing, oh see there, I've done a muck up there. So you can do it on the joystick or the keys. Uh, I'm doing it on the keys, the arrow keys. 1988, did you have this one or any variants of it? Let me know. So we cover complex games, we also cover basic games. It's basically to uh, try and cover everything possible that we possibly can. So this wasn't Amiga 1200, this is Amiga 500. Uh, 1988, so you know, quite early on Amiga ways. I'm not sure how much this cost when it was released. Uh, drum music goes on and on and on. You could probably hack into the game to change that if you want. So you're a snake, someone's put food pellets down, we don't know who, um, we've got to eat all of them. Now, hopefully I can get off level 2 to show you something else, but if I can't, you can jump to any level you possibly can. So this wouldn't have taken too much programming, I don't think. Did you get addicted to this game, or is this the first time you've ever seen it? Now I'm sure you've had a snake game on something, some device you've uh, owned, whether it be a ZX Spectrum, a Game Boy, um, a Sega Mega Drive, anything. I think all systems had a snake game, it was like a, a rite of passage, you'd have to have that. The tail can get quite huge at certain points, but it's all a question of weaving around and uh, keeping the body out of the way. And that's pretty much it really, I can't tell you any more about this game than what you've already seen. So uh, if you want to comment about stuff for your experiences of this then let me know. It's single screen, they're always single screen. I don't know if there was a snake game on some system where it's multiple screens. Uh, I wouldn't ever expect a HD remake on this one because it just wouldn't sell. We're in an era now where uh, publishers can't really take too much risks outside those cheap um, phone games for Android and the iOS system. Anything costs millions now in promotion, PlayStation 4, PC and the like. Um, so yes, they would never do a basic game. They might do it as a mini game on something. 
if it does is included as a mini game on some huge thing, then let me know because I'm unaware of it. And I've none, done another boo boo again. You need to concentrate on this game or it would turn around and bite you. And I just got bitten right on the green body. Not based on any real snake. I can't give you any facts and figures about actual snakes. Um, I'll leave that to you. What's your favourite snake? Put that below. Mine would have to be a uh, King Cobra. Um, because Only because it reminds me of a beer. There's a beer called a Cobra. Is that a Chinese beer or an Indian beer? I seem to remember it when uh, I'm in a restaurant. It must be an Indian because I'm not that keen on uh, Chinese food. It makes me a little bit ill. Uh, but Indian food, it might be... Oh, there's Tiger beer as well. I'm getting all my beers mixed up here. Now I fancy a beer. It's quite early on in the day. It's because it's been hot in the UK. It's been hot every day for God knows how long. Um, there's, they're talking about being a hosepipe ban. And it makes me wonder, what would they actually do in the UK or any country if you actually ran out of water? There'd be chaos. I'm told that um, if you do run out of water, if you turn... Oh dear. If you turn the taps on, no water comes out. The water board are duty-bound to deliver bottled water to people. But if they've run out of natural tap water, where are they going to get the bottled water from? Hopefully that doesn't happen. Uh, the earth is quite heavily overpopulated. And if we run out of drinking water, that could be a bit of a problem. But, you know, it's all about converting, I think, seawater to drinking water. I mean, there's loads of that. Is it not 70% of the earth is covered in seawater? We could probably have a million gallons each or something. So it's a question of getting the salt out of that. Desalinization. I've gone off a tangent, and I knew I would do in this game, because what, you, what are you going to talk about on a snake game? You're not... Oh, look, I've boobed up again. Nick, hey, concentrate. You're boobing up. Um... Boo boo. I like the sounds on this game for what there is, but don't drink seawater, folks, even if you're desperate, because uh, it'll just make you more thirsty. Remember that old phrase, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. I don't know who said that. Some shipwrecked mariner who was dying of thirst in some raft somewhere, probably, and um, couldn't any drink. I've only, I've only his raft had a desalinization plant, uh, then that would have been good. Uh, there is something I saw. Um, quite a few years back, it was like a, a filter tube where you put a filter, uh, you put this tube, it's like a straw as well, you put this straw on um, really murky water, be pond water or anything, and the filters would filter out all the horrible stuff and it come up with clear water, and I thought that's excellent. Um, I've never seen that available um, in the UK, it's just, it was just uh, aimed at third world things, uh, people, but uh, countries, but you know, I'd love that, that's a great thing. I don't know if you can put it in salt water and it filter out all the salt. Maybe, but I thought that, I thought that was really clever at the time. Where can one get one of those? If it was on Dragon's Den and I was a dragon, I'd definitely invest in that sort of stuff. And maybe a bigger maze for snakes. Yeah. Have you got a big green snake going around your garden eating pellets? Let me know about that. I know you haven't, but uh, let me know if you have. I don't know how many... Uh, gameplay reviews there are currently on YouTube regarding Snake Pit. Uh, there might be loads. I, I'm guessing there might be ones without commentary because as you can tell, com commentating on a game like this is not the easiest thing in the world. But it's all about fun this channel. We share ideas. It's not the most sensible thing in the world. And um, you know, no one gets shouted down for their ideas. I quite like this game. You might hate it. You might think it's a stinker. You might think it's a frustrating fest of doom. Um, I look for historic purposes, I like it. I did actually own it back in the day. It's one of those ones I did actually own. And I did waste a few bits of time on it. As I say, there was another game, a bit more advanced than this. I could never really work out what to do on it or what was going on. A bit like the uh, the plot of Quantum of Solace, that James Bond film. Um, I could never work out what was going on that as well. But interface, it was like 3D polygons going around some sort of tunnel. So I'll have to make a note to review that at some point as well. I do like these curios. I don't know how many exactly uh, games come out on the Commodore Amiga. ZX Spectrum's got the biggest catalogue I've ever come across. Over 25,000 games and still growing. Commodore Amiga, I think there's quite a few, but not nowhere near that sort of number. Atari 2600, I'm told there's less than 500. So it does vary between each one, but they, they were cartridge based, mainly the Atari game, so that's explained. Uh, Commodore 64, now that is 8-bit as well. Um, what was the 
How many games does the Commodore 64 have on it? Let me know about that because I do not know. Does it rival the ZX Spectrum or is it a lot less? Uh, Amstrad CPC is not really a system I've covered so I don't know too much about that. Uh, quite often, I, I always I might be wrong, I often saw that in third place in the 8-bit war behind the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64. In terms of popularity, it's not dissing the system at all. Uh, all each one could do different things, they had different looks to it. But this is 16-bit, uh, would look identical I'd imagine on an 8-bit system. Um, I'm unaware of this come out on the ZX Spectrum, I presume it did. That's the sort of thing that you'd uh, expect to have on that, or some sort of snake game. Haven't included any, haven't reviewed any snake games yet on any 8-bit system, so maybe that's something to look at. If you can take the super duper excitement of it. Right, so I've got quite a long tail here. We're doing quite well here. I think I'm gonna do it, aren't I? Right, so don't go back on your own t tail. Oh, good, right, we should do this now. We've only got three pellets left. We're gonna get off level two, hooray! Then we'll be getting an extra life. I might have to end this review before I lose all my lives because uh, I <laughs> We can't watch this. We can't watch this all day. At the time of recording the World Cup's going on, um, yesterday, England beat Sweden in the World Cup, so you're probably all excited about that if you're from the UK. Teams left in it now are Croatia, Belgium and France and England, so you might be watching this in the future and already know who won. Hooray for you. Um, but uh, this is really going to bring the excitement down a notch, I think. It's Snake Pit on the Commodore Amiga. Hooray! Right, okay, yes. Quite often at the end of the video I say, if you've got any comments about this, anything retro, anything at all, then please put it below. Nah, quite, quite literally on this. Hooray, quite literally on this, you can talk about absolutely anything. Oh, <laughs> this game, it's as basic as they come. Should we end it here? No, because this, this one looks quite easy. See, this stage, stage 3, looks a lot easier than the other stages that we've had so far. It's just just going backward and forward and you're going to do it, aren't you? There's no way you can go back on yourself here. Bom, ba, bom, bom, ba, bom, bom. If you're playing your bongos along to this game, then well done you. I wish I'd brought my bongos. So yeah, it's good bongo practice if you're a musician. Quite calming, I suppose. If you're quite stressed, I suppose you might get a bit relaxed watching this. Hooray for you, but we won't be doing all 50 stages. In the past we've done blundering series where we go through more than one video on each game trying to get through to the end. Uh, we won't be doing a blundering series on Snake Pit, but um, I suppose it is a bit overdue isn't it? We could be doing uh, a blundering series, maybe I'll put it to the vote. Some sort of driving game where we can go through in stages. We could probably fit that in quite nicely at the moment. While we've, while we've got the time, because we might not always have the time. It's all about trying to keep the channel running. Um, I'd like to keep it up at this sort of level, but it's all about, well, it's all about funding really to see if we can keep it going full time. Uh, and that could either be uh, YouTube ad revenue, uh, Patreon, uh, one-off donation through PayPal if you check the uh, the icons on the main screen there, or just by watching the video really. Every little bit helps. I think if a million billion people watched each video, I'd be cooking on gas. Hooray! Right, situation under control in a minute. See, that, that stage is really, really easy. Situation under control. Situation under control. You bet your bottom. Next stage. Bom ba bom ba bom ba bom 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 ba bom ba bom. And this one looks fairly easy as well. There must be a catch to it. We'll just do this stage, I think, then we'll call it a day, because this looks quite easy. But at the moment, my tower is gradually just building and building and building a very, very big snake. Let's do a bit of weaving to try and buy ourselves a bit of room. Yeah, because we're not falling for that old thing. We're experts now. Right. Yeah, the ones in the middle might be a little bit tricky than the others. No, this, this level's going to be easy. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of chocolate ghetto. So that's that's the list then. I need a tiger beer, uh, a chocolate gatto, uh, maybe another cake, and um, yeah, not a snake bite. I hate snake bite. There, there's something, there's some drink in Ribena, and that yeah, that always makes me feel a bit ill. I do like Ribena on its own, but oh, put alcohol in Ribena, then I'm not liking it at all. Are you a fan of that snake bite? Might be the first time you've ever heard of it. Black currant and some sort of alcohol drink. Avoid, avoid, avoid. It's not nice. Okay, boom, 
Right, here we go. Is this going to be the most watched video on the channel ever? I'd be surprised. It'd have to be mentioned on the news or something. And I can't imagine what news item comes on where they put Snake Pit on by me. But the situation again is under control. Situation under control. We got the situation under control, Chief. Great. Let's just do this one as well. See, it's quite addictive, this. I meant to stop playing it ages ago, but it is quite addictive. When you see quickly what you need to do, easy games, that's what that's what drags me in, really. If I see an easy game, you wouldn't have thought so seeing me play stage two. But when I see an easy game, I just want to play it forever till the end. Okay, don't cross the tail. Like Ghostbusters, don't cross the stream, but this time it's don't cross your own green tail. Don't be too greedy with it. Okay, no two-player option on this. Two snakes on screen at the same time would be pretty crazy. If you bump into each other, you're dead. But, yeah, Nick, you did that wrong. But even so, we've got lots of room to work with. Yeah, we've got this done. The drums are gradually speeding up. There's no timer on this that I'm aware of, but sometimes the jump do speed up in time. If there was a timer involved, it would probably add a little bit of extra jeopardy. Okay, so just one bank of uh, pellets to get. The, the tail's long out of the way of them. Get that, and then there'll be an exit, and then we're out of here. Boom. Oh, look at that. The exit's just there now. There's no side bit. It's just one, one gap in the top. They're trying to make it extra tricky, but that's not going to outwit us. Because the situation, as before, is well under control. Kaboom! Now I think we've well seen enough of that game. So I hope you liked having a look at that. That was Snake Pit on the Commodore Amiga. Quite a basic one, quite addictive, but I'd say a good one. Published by Incognito Software in 1988. If you've got any comments about that game, any games, or anything retro, or anything at all really, then please put that below. You're always welcome, it's that kind of a channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so, it's a big help, and a huge thank you to everyone that's done so, so far. As I mentioned before, if you want to help the channel a bit more, there's patreon.com slash njenkin. Every bit really does help the band play on. Until next time, take great care of yourself, and a very fond goodbye. Goodbye.